Hey yo, it is I. Um, anyone who doesn't know me already, I am John the Nice Guy Spriggs. Uh, I am uh, a computer security specialist, and uh, my day job is all about automation and orchestration. Uh, so by evening time, uh, I uh, assist a not-for-profit group. Um, in fact, it's not even a not-for-profit group. It's a it's an unincorporated group um, that basically provide services to Linux user groups. Uh, so if you know any Linux user groups in the UK, um, there's a reasonable chance that some of them, um, sorry, the, the one that you're thinking of, is probably supported by or a member of the log.org.uk um, group of uh, organisers. Um, and we provide services to Linux user groups in the UK. Um, so what does this mean? Well, uh, the main thing, and this is the thing we're going to be looking at here uh, today, is we provide DNS services and web hosting services. Uh, and by DNS services, I mean things like... Um, you know, if you want a something, something, something at log.org, sorry, dot log.org, dot uk, or glug, uh, which is, so lug stands for Linux Users Group, um, uh, glug stands for GNU Linux Users Group, political reasons for those namings, but, uh, you know, I've, I've got no particular bones in either direction on this one, it's a, it's a group that's there. Um, and then you also have, um, so you've got glug, You've got lug and there's also lugs.org.uk. Um, so the main thing that I believe we give to the lug to the Linux user groups community um, is that we run things like um, we run the the main list of Linux user groups in the UK. So that's lug.org.uk and there's a list of um, lugs on there. Um, but as I said, we also provide web hosting uh, through one of our, well, two of our servers. One's called SNM, uh, which is short for Static and Managed, or SNM, so Static and Managed. Uh, and the other one is Web01. Uh, so Web01 is the old um, log.org.uk server, sorry, web server. Um, and then SNM, we had a, a breach probably about 10, 12 years ago, um, where we let anyone that, anyone that wanted to run their own PHP web script could run their own web script. Uh, and uh, unfortunately the server got compromised and we started migrating people away from having these uh, dynamic sites to having managed sites. Uh, on the whole, uh, that migration happened probably relatively quickly and any new lugs that come in go on to SNM and the old ones, the legacy ones, live on web I one um, And that's not to say that we're not trying to think sensibly about what to do with those, but it's just a thing. So. Um, we also run mailing lists and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things that we are trying to do with log.org.uk uh, is trying to automate things so that it's a little bit less uh, hand cranked. So at the moment, um, when we provision a new lug, so somebody new comes on and says, I would like some lug services. So, okay, fair enough, thank you very much. Um, please can you tell us whether you want um, a uh, wiki if you want a st st static hosting or if you want um, a different kind of wiki. So there's two different kind of wikis and a static host. It's not a great a, a range of choices, but you know, you make with make of it what you can. Uh, we say, do you want a mailing list? We have a mailing list service. Uh, do you want any email redirects? We can do email redirects. Um, and do you want DNS services? Ooh, sorry. Uh, bah, bah, bah. This VPS is not very happy with the fact that I keep letting it time out. Okay, so we have they have those services, uh, and they come back to us and say, "Oh, so we want this, 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 and we want that." Great. Um, at the moment, the output from that goes into effectively a small script that we hand crank on these five servers. So we have admin, Weber one, SNM. Uh, mail-in and mailman, five servers. Um, and at the moment, we have to do a whole load of stuff. Now, what we want to get to the position of being able to do is take something like this. So let's just kill that one off down there. So here is a group, Choma Linux and Android users group. Uh, and they've got their hosting there. 
birthday group on WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp, LinkedIn even. Apologies. Um, and we've got some details around you know, when they started and what sort of, what their status is and when it was last updated and things like that. Um, but while this is all great, um, we currently don't have any way of doing that, uh, of, of hand cranking that. And this is actually partially driven um, by uh, another site we have here. So let me just drop into GitHub. So this is a VPS. I effectively I provision a new VPS each time I run these sessions. So there's a whole load of, uh, basically it's a completely blank profile underneath here. So if I go to github.com, mark org uk website, maybe not log org uk website. No, no, let's do that. Log org uk. Mm -hmm. ah, that's why, because it's under that. So if we go into here, uh, and the posts is all of the different Linux user groups. So here is, what was that? Chelsea forgot in Chelmer. So in here we have this raw file that contains all the details. And if you notice, if I stick that on that side there, uh, and drag this one over this side. Oop, okay. The lag is not helping me here somewhat in this remote session. Um, so yeah, so uh, Chelma Linux and Android users group established date, status starting, last update that date, categories, that location. There's some old stuff there, contact address. That's protected, but that's basically that one there. Um, permalink is that there. Uh, DNS name, Chalmer, blah, 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 blah. All right, so up to there. Ooh, for some reason that's not in there. Let me just copy that in. Okay, so. Um, so yeah, so what my intention is, is at the moment we ask the various different uh, logs when they create themselves to actually stick their own entry into this Git repo. Um, what my intention is, is to actually um, make it so that when the lug wants to create their services, they will actually raise a pull request onto this repo. If they don't know how to do that, that's fine. We'll help them with that. Uh, but if they do know how to do that, then we'll get them to raise the pull request submit it and then we can run this script manually on the server so let's have a look at what that script at the moment currently does uh, is it going to do that for me yes okay so uh, in here we have an ansible playbook um called site.yaml uh, so let's open up site.yaml site.yaml at the moment this just does the bind side of things so i'm working on Bind, uh, which is our, um, how do we describe this? Bind is the um, uh, DNS service that we run. Uh, so we're going to configure bind. And what happens is log.org.uk, sorry, log.org.uk.bind points to this directory here, uh, which is tasks, bind.yaml. So the first thing it does is it installs bind. In fact, what I'm going to do is, whilst, that's, whilst I'm going through what it does, I'm going to do an Ansible playbook site.yaml. Now, very important question. Yes, that line is still in there, which is not good. Apologies for the hiccups. Ooh. Okay, so um, I told it not to uh, fail on the bind now, on, on this script. So let's quickly go through what this is doing underneath the surface. So. The first thing that happens is this play here starts, and it's, uh, of course, uh, password yes, there we go, right. So the first thing that it does is it gathers facts. Now, gathering facts is basically saying um, how many, uh, yeah, how much RAM have you got? How many CPUs have you got? Uh, what 
interfaces you got, what are they, what are their IP addresses, what are their gateways, all those sorts of fun things. So that's the gathering fact. Uh, we actually only use one thing from that, which is the date and time. But um, so it takes a little bit longer than we'd necessarily want for it to run the gathering facts, but that's what it does. Uh, and then we install bind. So let's drop into this tasks main dot main again. So we install bind like this here. So we say uh, install the apt um, package bind line. That's just basically to, to run this um, setup on here. Um, the long term aim of this is for this to be running on um, on the log.org.uk service. At the moment, this is running in a virtual machine under Vagrant. Uh, so in fact, if you scroll down here, somewhere right down the bottom here, right down at the bottom here, uh, we have a Vagrant file. So this is actually running in Vagrant uh, and it's running on a VPS as well. So we are uh, nesting our hypervisors, which is good and fun and what everyone should be doing on this government. Um, uh, so this is just purely, so the, the initial Vagrant up ran and now we're installing bind. So bind is now installed and basically uh, when we run this in production, that's just to confirm that effectively we're running this on the right box. If we want to stand up a new box and transition these services over there, then we will run the same script on there and we will make sure bind is running. So this means that if we want to um, new can pave, start from a brand new fresh box, just put bind on there. We can do that with this script. Uh, what's next? Right, so next we want to install named.conf.local into etc. bind. So this is coming from a template, uh, and this template is named.conf.local.j2. So let's have a quick pop of that one open. Uh, so I went through this one last on the last session that I recorded. Um, but uh, so this is uh, taking some values from a config file up here called DNS. So here's bind copy. In fact, let me pop that over on that side there and let me collapse that down. So oops, wrong one. I need to also have on this side the node.conf.local.j2. Okay, so, uh, so we build this ACL set of entries. Uh, is that finished running down there? Ha ha, okay, I'll have a look at that in just one moment. Uh, right, so, uh, etc. bind db.log.org, okay. Nope, not that one. Names.conf.local. Okay. So here's this ACL block. Uh, so we're looping over this bind copies. Uh, there's only one entry in one one dictionary entry in here, which is bit folk ns. So uh, we then for item. So if item is not an empty set, which it might be, um, then we put the name of the key there. Uh, so that's this key, uh, and then we loop over each of the items inside there. And if each each of those is another dictionary. So this is uh, the server.key, and then we have two um, values in there. So we end up building this array of data here, which is all good. What's the next bit? The next bit after that is we say for database in DNS suffixes, uh, DNS suffixes. Um, uh, so we put the suffix there. So there's the suffix, log.org.uk. And then we create the zone. So here we have the zone. This is the name of that zone. So here's the names. Log.org.uk, log.org.uk, logs.org.uk. All good. Uh, and we say type master file and then the file name of the key, which is log.org.uk. Allow transfer to the ACL we had before, uh, which is by default. Not listed there, but that's fine. Um, oh yeah, here we go. So uh, for bind copy in db.value.bind copy. So this means if we wanted to have our own a separate list of um, uh, uh, bind copies, we could do that here. Otherwise, use bind copies. Dead simple so far. Um, and 
again, if bind copy doesn't exist, then we default to an empty set. Uh, and then if bind copy is a blank set, it's not a blank set rather, then put the name of the set in there. So we have this allow transfer, and then we have allow update none. Okay, so far so good. So this runs for each of the entries in DNS suffixes. So far so good. So log.org.uk, log.org.uk, logs.org.uk. So this means we have three separate suffixes. Um, so that means that if a log says we want to use log.org.uk or log.org.uk or logs.org.uk, all of these are options, um, it's up to them. So if I say, for example, the Southeast region decided they wanted to create Southeast regional logs group, they could call themselves southeast.logs.org.uk. Not that this has ever happened, but it's a possibility. Um, so we've got these three suffixes, and then we also have um, ogcamp is an event which was organized by uh, one of the other guys that used to run log.org.uk um, before I got involved in it. Um, so, uh, and I also have helped host and organize ogcamp in the past. Um, so I said we'd transfer the services into here. So this means we've got a separate local set of stuff for ogcamp. So they've got og.camp, ogcamp.org, ogcamp.com, ogcamp.net. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, what am I trying to find out here? Moving on. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, yes, okay, so after we have these entries for db.og.camp, we then have the reverse IPv6 DNS. So these are the entries for all of the hosts that are used to host log.org.uk. So for example, we have, he says, admin, mail-in, mailman, web01, and SNM. So far, not too much of a problem. Um, what is it I'm trying to find out here? currently showing that we have got a participant. I don't know who you are. Ah, I know what it was last time. <coughs> okay, ignore me. Mumbling to myself. There we go, that's the bit I wanted. Oh, hello there. I see we have somebody in the audience. Uh, hello there, I'm John, uh, as I've mentioned before. Um, feel free to introduce yourself, say hello, and uh, I'll be glad to uh, let you know where we're up to. If there's anything in here you want to know more about, please please do let me know. Anyway, so I'm gonna just keep an eye on the chat. If you say something and I miss it, then just wait for a second and I'll catch up with you. Um, so we've got some reverse DNS stuff here. This is all basically um, just where we create the entries for the fact that we've got servers that are running IPv6 that our um, hosting provider gives us um, some uh, some IPv6 blocks. So those are the addresses we've got for that. So what next? Okay, so uh, we then have our IPv6. Oh no, we then need to have a look at the zone files. So let's go back into main.yaml. So we've created from that template there, that named.conf.local. And then we say, get hit, uh, to do, can take that to do comment out now. Uh, create zone file ready to inject into etc. bind. So we have a slight problem with bind. It's not a big problem, it's a slight problem, um, which is that uh, in the heading block of every bind record, um, is what we refer to as a serial. Now, log.org.uk uses the year, month, day, and hour that we made a change to this file as our uh, signal. All so far, so good. Uh, the problem that we have with Ansible is that Ansible looks at whether or not the whole file has changed between uh, instance one and instance two. So if instance one 
So this file has changed, uh, but the only thing that's changed is the serial number. It means every time we run this, it's gonna generate a new serial number, which whilst that's not necessarily a problem, does mean that you end up with more stuff happening in the logs. And one of the things that we do here is we use this notify statement. This notify statement basically says, um, uh, we want you to do something when this when this changes. So what we're saying is, uh, create this zone file. Actually, that notify shouldn't be in there because that will never change. <clears throat> anyway, so change when false, right? So we're going to create this file, which is um, a, a file with a serial number, and it's got a load of stuff in it. If between this file running and the next time it runs, all that's changed is the the time then it will say that it's changed it, and then it will perform some actions, probably reloading bind and stuff like that. It doesn't really matter so much in a service like bind. Matters more in things like um, uh, Nginx, um, even potentially mail servers and stuff like that. So I try to make sure that we're not restarting services unless we have to. Partially because you have to wait for stuff to happen when you do a reload. If all you're doing is you just creating a text file, then it's pretty quick. Anyway, so we create this file, uh, which is a temporary file. Uh, and then we have a script here, uh, somewhere at the end of here, uh, uh, which I've written that basically just diffs, uh, creates a difference or checks the difference between uh, the temporary file and the file that's gonna replace. So let's quickly pop that file there open. Um, hello, Mohips. Uh, thanks for joining us. So it's, uh, it's nice to actually have some interaction on here for a change. Um, okay, so what are we up to? Oh yeah, so uh, we diff these two files. Uh, and if, uh, so let's find that file there. So here it is. So this is um, not exactly the best bash script in the world ever, uh, but it's a bash script. Uh, and effectively all it does is it says, if the file we pass through one uh, as the first value doesn't exist, then exit fail. Uh, if the destination file doesn't exist, then we literally just copy one to two and we exit one now. What have I got in here? So what this here does is it says, it's changed when output RC equals one and fails when output RC equals two. So what this means is that we've got three separate states. We've either got um, ran successfully, no changes to be made, uh, ran successfully, change to be made, Ran, uh, ran successfully, uh, but there was a problem. So that's our three states. So if we get to here, then we're exiting straight away with that. Something's changed. Uh, if we don't even get to that point, we exit saying we had a problem. And at that point, this script will stop. Won't progress any further because it's broken. Uh, so then what, what do we do after that? We um, look for the, sorry, the source is, ah, right, okay, so we md5 sum the file excluding the serial. Or well, strictly speaking, it's anything that starts uh, some spaces, a 10 digit 0 to 9 number, some other spaces. Uh, so if it's literally just that, uh, then it'll just render that, it'll render everything except for that one line. So let's have a quick look back at that file again. So what I could do, uh, and haven't, but what I could do is I could make it so that we were explicitly looking for some spaces, 10 digits of naught to nine, a space, a semicolon, a space, and then the word serial. So I could enforce the fact that this said serial there. I haven't. Um, and that's because this is a legacy script. 
so what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? Um, so because log.org.uk has um, evolved, it's grown from um, uh, something very simplistic. I mean, I'll, I'll, arguably it's complex under the surface, but it started out as a very simplistic set of scripts uh, and has grown as more and more people have been involved in the service. Um, I don't want to enforce the fact that this script has got a certain, has to be run in a particular way, has, has um, run things a certain way. So instead what I'm doing is I'm just looking for the stuff that I know is going to be there. That it's very uncommon to have in a, in a bind config file a 10 digit number with a space before and after. Uh, that is not anything I need to worry about. Good, good. Um, so anyway, so all I'm gonna do is very simple MD5 sum between this file output here, so this grep here, uh, and the grep, uh, grep is a way of just looking through a file, uh, looking for different, uh, uh, looking for strings. So the minus V here means excluding uh, anything that matches this string. And normally when you ungrep, so if I do a grep on here, so grep uh, uh, for slash s plus not uh, dash nine, 10 slash s plus in etc. bind db log dog dk. That doesn't return anything. And that's because we've got this extended flag. So that minus capital E is an extended thing. So it's, what it's saying is um, <clears throat> look for that string. So again, what I could have done was done could have done it like this. So I could have said, look for anything that matches uh, slash s. It means any number of space, sorry, any number of spaces greater than zero, greater than zero. So one to infinity number of spaces. And then naught dash nine. So anything between naught and nine in a sequence of characters, uh, 10 of those, and then another one or more spaces, a semicolon, uh, zero or more spaces and then the word serial and this minus i and this i here means case insensitive and so just to compare that to um, op.camp that also has same string in it um so let's if we now do that we now get all of the bump that is everything uh, other than the serial number. So again, let's have a quick look at what that file looks like without that. So that's the file uh, with the serial line in there. Got a whole load of bumps at the top. And then compare it against that. And that's just the only difference there is that one hasn't got the serial in it. Um, show um, if so. So we've we've generated these two strings. So let's just really quickly. So if we if I were to do bash uh, etc. Ansible uh, install roles log all UK bind files validate bind db sh. Um, so I can do bash minus x, uh, etc. Bind db dot 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 dk, etc. Bind db dot dot camp. So what this is going to do is it's going to compare the two files. So what has that done? Okay, that's done a lot of stuff in there that I wasn't expecting it to do. Oh, I know why. It's because it's logging it for me. 
Well, that is annoying. <sighs> oh, great. Um, that's for a check config. Right, okay. Uh, right. So I need to rerun my Ansible script on that. That's very annoying. <coughs> okay. Here's what I'm going to do. All right. Let's wait for that to finish running. Just take a few moments. Copy, etc. Bind db dot log, etc. Bind db dot log dot camp to slash temp. Right. So let's go into slash temp. I'm going to copy db dot log dot uk to original db dot log dot org dot uk. I'm going to copy db.org.camp to original db.org.camp. Right, so um, let's uh, run that bash script again. Bash. And instead of doing etc. bind, we're going to do. seems to be implying there's a difference there. What did I do wrong there? Oh, I know I did. We'll run it with no differences. So here's our first thing there. So we've looked to make sure that file exists. It exists, excellent. We've looked to see whether that file exists. It exists, fantastic. So then we've said, um, check the source and the destination. So the source is equal to grep minus VE and that string there from the file dollar one uh, and then md5 summit and cut some stuff out of it so you don't get to see all of that up there but effectively this is the md5 sum of that file and if you look at the destination the two strings there are equivalent so this is no differences and deletes the file fab right okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to edit ridge.db.log.org.uk and I'm going to put a new serial in there. So I'm going to say 2020. So all that's now changed in between those two files. So uh, db.log.org.uk or ridge.db.log.org.uk uh, and if I md5 sum that db.log.org.uk We've got two separate files there, right. 
let's run that script through bash again. So, ah, right, so again, it all is, because it's stripped out that serial number, it said the two files are the same. And in fact, if you notice, this sum here is equivalent because there's no difference there. Right, so let's copy that file into there and then edit it again. And now let's do something more than just change the date. Uh, let's say for sake of argument, this IP has changed, it's now by one, that's now changed, that's now by one. Uh, and the IP address has changed, that's been up, that's gone up by one. And that's gone up by one. Uh, right, that's enough, enough of a change. So if I now... Uh, MD5, those two files. So this is the original, that's the new one. But this is still obviously the same as it was before. So what happens when we bash minus X that? Right. So what it's now said is... Um, Oh. Ah, so it's actually shown, right, so in this script here, what I've said is, why did that not? Okay, I need to actually make it so this set of changes persists, because mm -hmm. that's really... Oh, of course. I don't know what I'm doing now. I'm just, I'm just making changes for the sake of making changes. I think. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So we create this source and destination thing here. And then what we said is that we show that there are differences and that we're replacing uh, file one, which has got this hash over this file, which has got that hash, all good. So then we diff, all right, okay. So we do that grep minus VE into a file, uh, which is this here, temp bind diff source. So we do the same grep, ve blah, 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 temp bind disk dest. So we then diff the two files. So we can see here what the differences are between A and B, excluding that serial number, because that serial number can change at any point, which is fine. Uh, and then this whole block here, we can more or less ignore, because that's just an if statement. Uh, and then we say move that file over there and uh, remove uh, any check output. We haven't got a check output, have we? Um, so we're going to ignore that bit a little bit. So yes, yeah, so we move this file into here. Uh, if it, if there wasn't um, a change to this file, then it would just exit out as zero, which is all good. Uh, so what happens next? All right, so we've done that. All good. Uh, so we can now oh, db start bridge db blah right. So let's cd etc. Ansible install again. It might be a good idea to assign 
dollar one, dollar two, dollar three. You're right. And in fact, actually, there is uh, a thing called shell check, uh, which is really useful for stuff like that as well. So let's quickly run shell check against this. Thank you very much, Mohips. All right. Uh, rolls, log dog, BK, bind, files. So if I now do a shell check on update bind, it's going to throw absolute. It's going to not be very happy with me. Um, okay, so largely. It said to read it, to read it, blah, blah, blah. Mm, okay. So yeah. Um, check exit code directly with EG. If my CMD, not indirectly with blah. Okay, right, so. Oh. Okay. So it's saying I can swap that. With that. Except I never test that anyway. All right, okay. Um. But yes, it's right. So let's swap. Uh, so um, in file equals dollar one, not dollar blah. Uh, out file equals dollar two, and check. So then from there on out, we can now do dollar one becomes dollar in file. So we skip the first one and then we do the rest of them. In file, in file, in file, in file, in file, in file, in file. Uh, but also we need to remove that like that and that. We skip down there, let's say that one and that one. And then we say dollar two is out file. So let's go up to the top. Two five four. Alright, so dollar two, dollar two, dollar two, dollar two. Dollar three is check named conf. Not that one, but that one. Yes. Right. So, what's the other thing it said? Backslash is literal in slash s. So it's saying that I really need to replace slash s with slash slash s see what that does replace 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 uh, so let's shall check that now so now it says that needs to go after that And we can remove that space there. I'm not sure that check is right. Uh, yeah, 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 good point. So perhaps, yeah, that's a good point. Well made, my hips. Sorry, I want to keep calling you by your uh, your normal nick, but I'm not sure how precious you are about people knowing that. So, but not that that's a bad thing. Just, just saying. Right, so now let's shell check it now. No errors, right. So, so for those of you who are watching along at home, uh, Mohips and I work together, we're at the same firm. So hence the reason why we know each other, we've got 
got a little bit of repartee here. It was very nice to actually have him live coding along with me, which is uh, nice. Um, so let us, so that's shell check has now worked on that. I'm happy with that. Uh, do I want to, yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick the minus X on that there. And I'm gonna make it dump the output. Bar var equals output. That's a ball flavor. <coughs> so most of the time you won't even see that script running in the background there. Um, uh, I'm not expecting people to be going looking at those files there. Um, so let's see what that has just done. Um, so it has said in file, out file, check named conf, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> so we've got our no differences there uh, and we remove our temporary file that's good and the other one so what I'm now going to do is actually going to go in and I'm going to mess up etc bind db.log.org.uk uh, I say mess up I'm just going to change it a little bit so Again, so we've got all these differences in here that don't really matter. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's all fine now. So now what I want to see is we've got a changed <coughs> a change line in there. Um, uh, let's maximize that one. So yeah, so let's have a look at, that's now gonna fail again for me, but that's fine. I can come back to that in a minute, right. So yeah, so we can now see in here that we do have these differences. Um, do I want to render the fact that, that file has changed. No, because we see a changed entry anyway. It's just whether how much detail we want to go actually go into with it. No, it's fine. It's fine. I'm happy with that. Um, right. So, what happens next? Well, we get to the end of. Let's drop that out of there. Uh, so we make the etc bind reverse directory. We create the reverse bind files. We verify that we replace the changed zone files. That's fine. And then we reload bind. So what happens when we reload bind? So in here is a handlers file, which is main.yaml. And literally all that's doing is asking systemd to restart the bind nine service. But this is saying it's failed. So let's have a quick look at my bind nine has failed. Uh, network unreachable resolving DNS key in. Why is that failed? I think we might need a bit more detail than that. <laughs> All zones loaded. Network unreachable. Resolving is gone. Key now trusted. Automatic empty zone. Aha. Reload failed. Permission denied. Because 
the log file is not right. So what do we need to do? We need to create a file. File. Log. Touch named dot log. And who needs to own named dot log? Chone. Uh, have we got bind? Uh, wrap, bind, etc. Password, bind. Okay, churn, uh, bind, bind, uh, named dot log. Uh, system CTL reload bind line. slightly different tool out of the bag here run bioboo so bioboo is hmm, interesting how to install bioboo um bioboo is basically just a really pretty oh, a, a, it's a slightly more sensible um terminal tool uh, for having multiple active sessions at the same time so bioboo um, so uh, I'm going to split that window in half. Right, so tail minus f minus n zero find var log type f. So this basically is saying just look, watch every single file in there. Don't care what's in there. And then we're going to do system ctl restart. So why has it failed? Configuring logging permission denied. It's really not happy with me doing that, is it? So audit these failing and saying denied mask AC FSUID 107. So let's have a quick look. Uh, grep 107, etc. Password is bind. Um, Do you know what? I'm going to remove named.log and then I'm going to do something really stupid. Chone, uh, Chimod, even. 777 log. Right, so if this was a real system, you would never, ever, 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 ever do that because that, that breaks all sorts of security stuff. Um, but frankly, this is a little test box. In fact, this is a vagrant box. If I exit out of this and exit out of this, uh, you're in a vagrant box. So if I vagrant SSH back in again, um, hopefully I've not just completely knocked that. No, that's fine. Sudo minus I. Excellent. Um, so if I now cd bar log ls minus la. So my named D is gone again. So. Uh, Minus F minus N zero find our log type F and then system CTL restart find nine it's still failed. Why has it failed now?
because user has been named, can't create while I'm not named. So, this is an audit D thing. Let's have a quick look at audit D. Audit D. Named Debian. So, audit D. Etc. Audit D conf. So, see. Etc. Audit D. File doesn't exist. Ah. CD, etc. Audit. File doesn't exist. Oh, interesting. Thanks for that. On my box. So it's owned by bind group of root. Interesting. Um, well, let's have a quick look and see if we can find what's going on with audit D anyway. Um, audit D. No, not like that. Uh, D package minus L grab. Audit. Lib audit common. Set, etc. Less lib audit. Failure action log ignore terminate. Fart log touch named dot log churn bind root named dot log. System CTL restart bind nine failed. Not allowed to append. Hmm. Well, this is an interesting one. Is it just? Oh, it's because it's App Armor. It's not Audit D, it's App Armor. That's why. App Armor named Debian. App Armor breaks bind name. AA dash complain. AA dash complain. AA dash complain. Doesn't exist. Brilliant. Etc. App Armor dot D. User S been named. Would you 
look at that. So where is it trying to take that log file? Some people like to put logs in var log named instead of having syslog do the heavy lifting. Wow. Well, yeah. Oh, that's why. Right then. See local readme. So if we echo var log named dot log now read right okay whatever that stands for um T N of local user has been named System CTL restart and bind line. Well, why did that bloody fail? Keep in mind that deny rules are evaluated after allow rules. Oh, it's because it's commented out, you fool. <sighs> Spot on. Well done. Thank you very much, my hips. Much better. Right, so we now have a working bind service, I think. So, uh, dig. Uh, snm.log.vk at 127.001. Dig command off him. Why is dig now oh, DNS utils at install DNS utils? Nick, you're so useful. <clears throat> oh well, so much for that one. Right, uh, so let's stick that in there because that's really useful having that thing. Name. DNS utils. Uh, right, so where's that dig command gone? There we go. There we go. Oh, it's not come back with what we wanted there, has it? Right. Query failed. Blah, 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 blah. So why has it failed? Why are we running, are we running the resolve.conf? Yes, we are. Um, system. System D resolved.
is inactive and dead. That's good. So if not that then. Query found server fail. Okay. Um. So, Mo Clips, any suggestions, mate? Check your logs in bind. Well, that's what that's doing up there. The var log named dot log is is the bind logs. Um, type master far blah blah blah. So this is my comparison files. So what am I looking at here? Are you allowed to query that zone? That is a very good question. Um, Named.conf.options, maybe there? Uh, Named.conf.options. Oh, lots of different things there, isn't there? So that is the problem. Thank you very much. Once again, absolute superstar. So let's have a quick look at, um, in fact, let's close that panel down and open them up. Because it looks like we need to make sure we've got these lines in here. Named.conf.option. So,
Uh, so we need to create a new template file then. So new file named.conf.options.j2 because we need to put in there the stuff about our forwarders. So we can close that one now. We've done that one. So I think once I get this file sorted out, or at least the start of this file sorted out, uh, I am going to actually call it a night, I think, because it's a little on the late side. Uh, so let's pop open. Uh, let's copy into there, actually. And the name.conf.options to vagrant old blog or go bind templates yes whatever it's the one one of the things that bugs me about VS code is that every time you pop something open it goes oh I know how to handle that file do you want me to copy it? do you want me to do something with that Gee, oh can't we <clears throat> anyway uh, named.conf.options.j2 right so this now has what the original file looks like. Pop those two side by side. That one and that one. So file cache bind, blah, blah, blah. Forwarders, right. So let me also open up this thing here. Pop that at the bottom down there. And see if any of those Match where we can send stuff to. No, okay. So, forwarders. It is used for set is not equal to an empty set. if if item dot value default uh, empty set is not equal to an empty set Oh. 
so that builds up that bit there. Right, auth annex domain, no. Okay, well that's clearly not part of that anymore, is it? So. Interesting, let's put that in. This is from admin.org.uk config as of 2021 01 DNS sec enable. That's basically in there to say, I don't know what this is for, but you know, whatever. Uh, right, so. Without queried by anyone, blah, blah, blah. But we run all without your name, server, so no refreshing. So. I think that block there should actually be like that. I don't think that needs to be indented or anything specific. So what I might do is yank that out of there. Yank that out of there. Put this in here. So this is all from admin to logo. Commentary on the validity of any of these lines is implied. Smiley face. Right, so. to tell that to put that into there so maybe what I need to do install name.conf files Run our Ansible script. Ansible playbook. No. And actually telling it where to find that file might be a good idea, etc. Ansible install site.yaml. Etc. Ansible install. Well, that has been fun. Right, okay, so install name.conf.files into etc. bind, all good. So that's added that new one in there. Reload bind. Okay, so now dig. Ugh. Right. I think what we're going to do is quite sensibly leave this for tonight, for it is very late. It is nearly midnight uh, UK time. Well, I have had an absolute 
blast. Uh, yes, I agree. I do need to write some tests in Ansible and then back out if needed. The problem that I have. Oh, I think this might be our problem. Loading from master file, etc. Bind db.log.org.uk failed. Extra input text. Well, isn't that interesting? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that as a line into this file here, he says. Not actually being able to do that because uh, he can't he can't do copy and paste to save his life. Copy. Come back into tasks main. Close the terminal session. Uh, and so in here. Fix me. Because it's more than a to do, it's a fix me. Um, Cause that's a problem. That's a proper, proper problem. That. In fact, I'm almost tempted. No, it's 10 minutes to. I can't do this. I can't do this tonight. Right. Thank you very much for watching all along. It's been a blast. I hope you all are having a great time. Uh, and with that, I'm going to wrap up for tonight. And uh, I'm going to hang on. So what else do I? So, Moclips, you said tip, write some tests in Ansible and back out if needed. So what sort of tests could we do? Uh, so, ah, that was what, so in this validate bind, bind DB SH, we actually have it, it'll do a check name, a check, a named check conf. So let's have a quick look at what that does. If we do that. db.og.camp near glug.org.uk extra input text. So let's have a quick look at that. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Near glug .org .uk extra input text. So that's a good question. RP. Um, so in our existing source file, let me find our existing source file. Uh, we have got this record. Uh, and it says RP. And I think it stands for responsible person. In fact, let's have a quick, quick check out of that.
An RP record makes it possible to identify the responsible person for individual host names. I don't think I actually need that. The responsible person, R R. Mbox D name, text D name. So domain that specifies the mailbox responsible person. Its format and master file uses DNS name convention. The root domain name just blah. So you're only allowed to have two records. <sighs> but you can have multiple records. Oh, right, okay. Well. So then. That's all we need then. We just need that. We don't need the rest of the bunk. So I've misread what that file was. So let's come back into here and say in RP, this value is RP. So RP has come from up here. Uh, so we can close all these files. I think once we've done this, I'm not going to reload it tonight I'm gonna I'm gonna save this but so default RP is gonna be yeah it's just gonna be admin dot log dot org dot uk log org uk I think that looks right let's just have another quick check of that Our text provides additional information and advice. So yes, yeah, so we can create a basically saying email admin at love.org.uk or look at the love.org.uk file. Yeah. Oh, you know, let's just quickly run this through anyway, because it's not going to take us long, is it? System CTR. Oh no, so let's have a quick look. Ah, yes, 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 that's what we need to do as well. So we now need to say whenever we run this script that does the thing, we need to perform check. So it should actually fail 
in the case of a failed bind comp. But let's also just run that command anyway, because we may as well. Why not? Uh, bum, bum, bum. Uh, at least there's only. Oh, I was going to say there's only two entries there, but then I forgot that I'm in BioBoo, so. Uh, C name and other data. Well, that's no good, is it? Um, multiple RRs of singleton type. Okay. Yeah. I think I think you're right. I need to call it. That's a very good point. Um, so let's go back into here and say we are now, so fix me. dear listener, watcher, whatever you are, uh, I'm going to knock this on the head. So thank you very much all and uh, speak to you anon. Tidy bye.